Dr. she wants to go there because now they're going to give the courses in one year, intensive course, like 12 months. And I said, if you pass, I'll stop work. You take her to the, the boys. She passed. <laughs> so I had to resign and uh, become a house husband for 12 months. And it was a great, great experience. <laughs> So uh, we, we take a lot of things for granted, but planning meals for your children every day, breakfast, night, that, 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 buying, preparing, and I said to my wife, don't come near the kitchen, and like, I like to cook too, don't come near the kitchen, because this is my turn now, to go out, <laughs> and she was also very busy, you know, she was uh, in the library, in the midnight, so I did 12 months as I promised, she finished it, she graduated, then I said, now it's not real, you cannot just sit and not earn money. Then I, uh, when I was saying that, then this organization contacted me, International Idea. They said, are you still interested? I said, yes. So they said, can you come now? I said, no, I cannot come now because I have to finish my 12 months commitment. <laughs> uh, and then they want me, it is based in Stockholm, they want me in Stockholm, I said, no, Africa, because that was my also Second dream, I have to work, you know, go back to the continent. Uh, so I came here as a, a senior advisor, and it has been great here. You see, it's not United Nations, it's smaller, much smaller. It's intergovernmental. Members are only 26, I think 27 now, countries, uh, where as the United Nations is 190 something. It's a lot of flexibility, a lot of independence in terms of design. You know, projects. I have been working with the African Union, you know, I have a major project with the African Union. We have been coordinating that. Uh, now we have set up an office there, so I'm slowly trying to withdraw uh, from there. But we have been doing a lot of conditional work with the African Union. Working with the African Union, you all actually work at, at a grow at a continental level. So you don't see the, the real effect on the ground, the country level. And I've been really looking into what we can do. And now South Sudan is a place where we are working. And again, South Sudan is coming out of conflict of many, many, many years of war. You go see that country. You see that there isn't much there. When you talk about colonizers, at least they have left the capital, some infrastructure. This was kind of internal conflict, where every development happened in the capital and around the capital. And in, in South Sudan, nothing. There was a pity to see how a country, well endowed, water, life passes, you know, through that. It rains all the time. Papas, papas, you know, they fall. You know, you don't have to do that. And yet there is nothing. So I start to discuss, I know that many people there, I start to discuss in terms of nation building first. And then they said they were going to draft their constitution. I said, then I can help. But make constitution drafting an exercise of nation building. You see, it's a country that has been under war with many different ethnic groups that have not been brought together. You know, to think as a nation, except to be opposed to the North. We are opposed to Khartoum. We are opposed to the North. We are opposed to this. That is good, but not enough. If your mentality is a mentality of opposition, you know, opposing, then where do you and when do you come into a constructive engagement? How do we now, instead of opposing, build something? How do we build our country? How do we build the nation? It's very important. And uh, uh, this is what you know we're trying to do with Venice. What are the issues that the people are concerned about? Economic issues are number one. Service delivery. You know, there is nothing. And how do you really get that service going? Education, health, all sorts of infrastructure. You know, it's a place where there is no tap water at all. You know, in the hotels you find, but it's 
it's their own. It's not like the government does that. There are many, 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 many things. So, so let's engage the main issues while also drafting the constitution. But let's also try to make it as participatory as possible. You have to bring your people to discuss these issues. Otherwise, you sit down in one capital without much infrastructure to reach out your people. You can, what we call, you can write the constitution, but you cannot make the constitution. You can have five lawyers sitting down in one house five days or one month. You can come up with a fantastic constitution. But that is writing the constitution. That's not building a constitution. Building a constitution is part of nation building. And that is bringing people together. So that's the kind of discussion that we, we, we are having. There is also, because of their own history, uh, uh, there is always suspicion about the center, about Cuba, because their experience is that Khartoum has been killing them all. So what is Cuba? They don't have that experience. So there will be a lot of suspicion on Khartoum, and we're discussing how do you plan to administer the country. Sit in Khartoum and give out orders, or do you plan that every other, they call them province, I mean states, are kept in Cuba's agent? Do they have their own way of governance? Do they have their own freedom? Do they have their own autonomy? Call it whatever, it's decentralization, it's federal, federal arrangement, but you, got, you have to be able to define it. Otherwise, people would look at the center with suspicion. And the, the center will act like many centers, controlling everything. Is that what you want? So that's also what we're talking. Resources, sharing, of course, management and sharing. You know, they have oil, huge. Because the oil and also the, 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 the uh, exporting oil. A lot of money. The, you know, the, the, the last six years was a transition period, what they call uh, uh, CPA. Comprehensive Peace Agreement was an agreement brokered by the UN uh, uh, and international community that the two stay together in some kind of arrangement so, so that we can have peace. But during this transition period of six years, Khartoum, which is the uh, you know, northern, has to make it attractive to the southerners to be part of Sudan. If they don't make it attractive, then you know, the referendum will decide. There will be a referendum in the South to either you know, separate or have whatever relationship. Of course, Khartoum, uh, you know, in most cases, as, 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 as one can imagine, you know, when you are a ruler and you think you are strong and that, was foolishly hunting the South uh, cave and people decided to, to withdraw completely from the Union, so it is, it is, it is uh, an independent country. But during that six years period, the agreement was that oil would be shared equally. All rebels were shared 50-50. That meant that there was a lot of money coming to an organization that never had to manage anything except for it. See, no social service, no schools, no health service, no towns, nothing. So, billions of dollars. And one asks, what happened with billions of dollars? There's no, no way that group could manage, because they had no infrastructure, they had no institutions, no experience. But people look around and they say that, but we have oil, and we know that billions of dollars come to our country, where is this money? Where is this money? We don't see a new building. We don't see a road that leads from some from one to another. We don't see new schools or clinics or anything. What you see is all sorts of four wheel drive cars. That's all it's because there aren't many roads. So that is a very, very, very important and sensitive issue. Managing oil and gas and other natural resources and sharing it properly. It's like what I was talking about Iraq. What do you do? You know, the oils are now in the, the kind of the north uh, part of the country, uh, some on the border with, you know, with Sudan, uh, mostly 
on the other side of the board. Uh, and of course, you have the peace issue. Because you see, it's not easy. Just stop, separate, and you go your own ways. There will be a lot of grievances. A lot of people are angry in the north. The south are separate. But on the other hand, the south have been fighting. So there is a fighter mentality where instead of resorting to diplomacy, you might want to resort one, you might want to resort the gun from time to time. Does that bring you know democracy? Does that bring you know development? You know, to, you know country or country. It's a very interesting, but that's also the things that uh, we uh, are trying to look into. And then uh, the the army. When I talk about the army, this is a special army. It's a liberation uh, army. It's not a regular army. Liberation armies are, are, are a bit different. See, liberation armies, they were fighting for a political purpose. So the, the members of that army, in this case the SPLM, uh, Sudan People's Liberation Movement and Army, they were fighting uh, against the North for independence. They were not, you know, proper army where they are. They are kind of combat outside uh, invaders. Now they come out and say that, you know, we fought, but we are not soldiers. We fought, we are politicians. So how do you manage that army? Because in a democracy, the army has to be under civilian. Uh, and the civilian administration. But when you have a liberation army, and it says that, but I'm not, I'm not a soldier, I'm a liberation fighter. What do you do? But you have to, to engage that. You cannot have an army uh, that has its own mentality and mind and structure, everything like that, and doesn't come under the civilian administration. So it's a very interesting thing. You have, of course, uh, the judiciary. What's the role of the judiciary? It's not very much clear now. Uh, you have many political parties. In kind of normal circumstances, political parties compete. In a country that is trying to get, you know, together, what is the role of political parties? Do they just compete? Do you have the, the luxury of keeping competing? or you have to have a balance between competition and cooperation. Because in nation building, you have to be able to come together under certain fundamental principles. For example, national unity, or with shape, or something. It must be that. You cannot just be competing. You don't have that like here. In the United States, you can compete that. In the United States, you remain in the United States, or in Canada, or other places. In South Sudan, if you compete, and especially when you have parties that are you know, build along ethnic lines, then it's a problem. Then it's a problem. I think I can go on uh, talking about this, but I also would like us to, to, to discuss. But the thing is that, uh, for me, we just open our eyes as young people, you know, and be you know, a bit kind of feeling of adventures, uh, not in negative uh, or destructive sense, that there are many opportunities, especially in Africa. Europe is difficult, it's no more hospitable for sports medicines now. I think the same is uh, North America. But Africa is fresh. And the strength and the vigor of young people is very much needed. And the field is quite open. Thank you.